Hi YouTube friends. How are you guys today? Hope everybody is doing well and uh, welcome to Sunday Sewing Chat. <laughs> Let me just bring up my live chat. Um, see my notificate my uh, video doesn't seem to be working here. Let me try again. There it is. <laughs> oh, technology is so much fun. <laughs> okay, welcome everybody. Hi, Dorlin. Hi, Ann. Hi, Kathy. Hello, Kim. Hi, Colleen. Hi, Amy. <laughs> Hello, Lisa. I like that little girl in the purple shirt waving. <laughs> That's me. Hi, Helly. How are you doing? Um, let's see. I said Lisa. Hello, Donna. Hi, Shelly. Hi, Linda. Hello, Sherry. Hi, Faith. Hello, Brenda. Hello, Linda. Welcome to the channel, everybody. Welcome to Sunday Sew and Chat. <laughs> so I hope everybody is doing well. I have my iced tea. I'm ready. Hi, Gladys. Okay, Dorlin said, found some orphan 5-inch squares. I've been wanting to make a block, a churn dash, but the book I have does not give me the measurements. Can anyone help? This beginner. Yes. Well, what I would do is start with my half square triangles. So, put two of your five inch blocks together facing each other um, draw a line from corner to corner down on one of them if you need that and then sew a line on either side a quarter of inch line sew on either side of that line and then cut the square from corner to corner on the line and then that'll give you two half square triangles once you have those and you have them trimmed down, I'm not sure what they'll square up to, but then that'll give you the measurements for the inside piece that you need to measure, to cut. And then you just want to make sure that all your other pieces, um, you know, are the same width as your half square triangles. Does that help? <laughs> or was that more confusing? I suppose we could make one in a little bit if you guys want to on the fly <laughs> on how Teresa would do it <laughs> okay everybody's just saying hello to eat everybody so let me see hello Cindy oh it's almost bedtime you didn't see it was a live stream? Yeah, it's a live stream. <laughs> That's why you can chat. Okay. Thank you, Kim. Oh, Lisa said, why, yes. Let's make one. I know I love the turn dash block um, or turn dash block too and I haven't made one yet but it is on my to-do list okay Dorlin said thanks awesome going to give it a try where is the bot I gave him the boot I booted the bot 
I did because he just drove me crazy last week and um, so I'm like uh, today I don't want to deal with the bot I'd like to learn a little bit more about that bot and understand how it really works and I just haven't given it the time to sit down and like Colleen does and um, you know go through it all and so Mm, yeah, I th I kind of felt like he was causing some trouble last week that I prefer not to have. <laughs> so, happy day, no bot, I know. So, just no drama. We're here to have fun, okay? <laughs> That's why I'm doing this, is to visit with all my friends to make friends, make new friends, and um, have a safe environment <laughs> where we can all just, you know, feel safe to say what we want and put as many emojos in our comments as we want <laughs> without getting kicked out. <laughs> Hi, Grace. Lovely to have you here today. Hello, Patty. Yep, just here to have fun. Fun, fun, fun. Hello, June. Hello, Tammy. Okay. So, I'm going to uh, sew a little bit on this binding. And then, when I get tired of doing that... Hi, Heather. Um, maybe we can do an impromptu uh, churn dash block. Why not? And the other thing is I got my sew sampler box and I haven't made a video for that. Um, <laughs> um, I was just laughing at what somebody said. So I might uh, open that up in a little while too. Yeah, we could do that. Linda, yep. Yeah. I have to figure it out though, I've never made one. <laughs> Patty's gonna come out of the bow, out down out of the balcony since it's no bot day. <laughs> um, today is the day to get the binding on your quilt. That's what I'm gonna start out with. Hi, Robbie. Kim is eating the last of her steak. Ooh, that sounds good. Hi, Wendy. How are you doing? Did I say hi to June? If not, hi, June. Did I miss anybody else? It's really warm up here today, upstairs. It's a very warm day. Tomorrow's supposed to be 90. I'm not sure what it is today, but it's pretty warm upstairs. I, I have the fan going. But it's still hot. And then I might have something else to let tell you about too. Yeah. So all right. I'm gonna start kind of in the middle of this quilt. This is the quilt I was um squaring up last Sunday and as you can see I have done nothing <laughs> I haven't put any binding on it but I did find enough um, of this fabric I believe to uh, but there will be enough to do the whole quilt so hi Beth how are you doing thank you for the thumbs up reminder Go out, give me a thumbs up, and come back. <laughs> so we had fun over at Beth's channel, uh, Goody Goods, earlier today. I was still doing my chores and listening, so I wasn't in the chat very much, but I was there. <laughs> 
Thank you, Cindy. Um, anyway, she's a lot of fun to listen to. If you're not subscribed to her channel, you should go check her out. Um, very sweet young lady with a bunch of kids. I think she has four. <laughs> and, um, yeah, she's a lot of fun. We get some lively conversation going over there in her chat. Um, now, I like to wear these uh, free motion gloves when I'm doing my binding because it's a lot easier for me to grip a hold of the quilt where I have arthritis and other things going on in my hands. It just makes it a lot more simple. <clears throat> and I'm going to sew my binding onto the back of my quilt. And I'm going to give myself about 10 to 10 or so inches, you know, 10 to 12 inches thereabouts, loose. So I'll just start it down there. And I might go ahead and put in one clip just to get me started. I don't usually clip this part of the process. And I hope I don't knock you guys around, but the camera. Thank you, Colleen. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Colleen. I know it's going to be a little more work for you today or any of the moderators because I don't have the bot up. <laughs> Hi, Jacqueline. So I do apologize for that. And um, thank you for to all of my moderators for being here. It looks like I have June as a moderator. She's here today. And Kim. And T and C N, that's Colleen. She's here today. And um, yeah, so if you have any questions or I missed your question, um, get let one of the moderators know and then I'll try and read it. Okay, thank you, Colleen. I am gonna fix it. <laughs> it kind of freaked me out last week, you know, you know. Oh, uh, so <laughs> I'm like, I'm just going to turn that darn thing off. Plus, I think I lost a lot, four subscribers. <laughs> Ow. Ouch. <sighs> that hurt. Okay, I'm going to backstitch that. And I'm going to... I hope I have enough of everything. So what are you guys working on today? Move this down just a little bit like that. You guys doing anything fun? I have been working on these quilts, long arming, and the one I have over on the long arm right now is um, custom quilting. So it takes a little bit longer. It's not edge to edge. It's something different in every border. And then um, something unique in each block. Um, but on this quilt, the blocks are all the same, and so the design I'm doing is the same in each block. But it's pretty complicated. Um, I wouldn't say that it's custom custom, because like a major custom would be where you um, stitch in the ditch too. And I'm not doing that, so I'm bypassing that. But I'm still doing uh, something different in each border. So I have three, three borders and then a bunch of little blocks and they are the, um, like a pinwheel block. Trying to get my sheet back on my bed. That's a chore. <laughs> you know, I bet these gloves would help. Hello, so not an expert. Hi, Danny. How are you doing?
Yes, that's the one thing about it. Uh, makes putting links in very accessible for everyone. Okay. Bye, Ellie. Thanks for stopping in. Brenda made my, made her husband a bucket hat for their 21st anniversary. Happy anniversary. And um, let's see. Has a lake shore on it. Working now on my four-star general. Awesome. Gladys is playing free cell on the laptop. I don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, Patty says, Beth inspired her to work on her FPP papers. Cool. Hi, Mary. Nope, you're not late. <laughs> Anne is cooking dinner, but she's listening. Awesome. Hi, Kathy. I'm pretty sure I said hello to you earlier, hon. But hello again. They said, Melissa, you have a nice variety of projects on your channel. Oh, free cell is solitaire. Okay. Teresa, how long does it take on average for you to do a custom quilt? Well, I know you say on average, but it really just... Um, depends on how big the quilt is of course and if I'm able to get to from block to block without breaking my thread which on this design every block I do I have to do the design and then break thread and then go to the next block so that's taking me a little bit longer um, So, I don't know, I guess maybe eight hours altogether. Could be longer. Really depends on the design. Say a queen size. Um, well, that's pretty much what I have on the queen on here right now and I've done two rows and I want to say about three hours so yeah I want I would say probably eight to 15 hours I don't know I figure that it takes me every bobbin is like 45 minutes. I think I timed it one time and that's what it came out to be. Well, and I would say that was my average in the beginning of long arming. I'm a little bit faster now. However, because I'm doing this custom, um, you know, I do have to take my time. But So let's say 45 minutes per bobbin. Oh, okay. Kay said, if you are interested in the churn dash, I would love for you to check out my videos with a couple of different variations. Did you uh, see that, Dora Lynn? So you could uh, go check out the purple wall. She has a couple of videos. 
but don't leave yet. <laughs> yeah, it's very time consuming, but you got to remember that I have, um, besides the blocks, I have three borders. So each border I do, I have to break thread. So I do a border, break the thread, go back up, start again, go back down as far as I can, break thread, because I, I can't go from one over to the next. Just kind of the, because of the way they have the borders on here. And then each block, I do the design and break thread. So yeah, it's this one is a little time consuming. Oh, thank you for subscribing to K at the Purple Wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Colleen. She said, ha ha, after your visit with Teresa, then go look over at K's. <laughs> but it's the emojos that she put on there. That's funny. Okay, here we go. Anybody else doing binding today? Finding really isn't one of my favorite parts of the chore, but it does indicate that you're almost completely done with the quilt, <laughs> right? So that's, that's a good thing. But I do not hand sew on the binding, so I know a lot of people do, and that's okay. If that's your thing, go right ahead. Hi, Patty. She's finishing the Zack Box quilt. Cool. From the So Yeah Brothers. I haven't even seen that. I think that's a private video, isn't it? Up just a little bit higher. It's puckering my fabric. Make sure I got thread. <laughs> Hi Rita. How are you doing? <laughs> oh. You're just quoting Rita. The binding will hold. Cucumbers won't. <laughs> oh, she is here. Awesome. Old and tired. You're not that old. I know, you do stay busy. I love your channel, by the way. I uh, ran into it a couple of weeks ago and started watching it. But I'm a one of those bad viewers. I don't comment very often. <laughs> but I do watch it. And I'm very sorry about your puppy. It's, it's sad when, they, when we lose them. I know. I'm glad you're doing okay. And I hope your husband is well. She does stay pretty busy. She does a lot of, uh, I would say her video, kind of like a vlog, you know, talking about the day, what she's going to be doing, stuff like that. She does some beautiful quilts. Thank you, Melissa. So there is Rita's channel if anybody would like to check out Rita. Okay, coming up to the corner here. So we gotta turn this bad boy around. Do a mitered corner, those are always fun. 
So yesterday I mostly um, tried to work on my long arming quilt. And um, <laughs> oh, thanks, you guys. Thank you, Beth. I am going to make Beth moderator of the day. There you go, Bethy. Um, now what was I going to tell you? Take a break from this. Thank you, Melissa. <laughs> Woohoo, Beth! Wahoo! There she is. <laughs> there needs to be a dancing emojo. Yeah, there need. I th isn't there like they have the dancing Spanish girls? Um, oh boy, it is hot. So, the hubby taking the, gonna take the dogs to the swimming hole, which is about, oh, maybe five miles away from the house, thereabouts. There they are, there's those girls. <laughs> and, um, he decides to take the side-by-side, -side, you know, the... The four-wheeler, not the four-wheeler, the RTV, Recreational Terrain Vehicle, whatever. And um, the one we had problems with last week, where we got stuck way up in the mountains. But he, he figured it was running now, right? So he takes it, and Willa decides she's not going to go because she won't ride in that thing unless I'm in there. And uh, so Willa and I took a nap. And it was, I guess I laid down about 3 o'clock, and I woke up at 4 o'clock, and no hubby. Which, I'm like, okay, he's only been gone an hour. It's probably, maybe, okay. I'll give him till 5 o'clock, you know, or something. Because I knew he had to go run up somewhere else up there and look for something that he lost. And then, so it could have taken him a little more time, you know. So five o'clock hits and still no hubby. I'm like, all right, I better go see if he broke down. Hi, Courtney. And sure enough, <laughs> there he was sitting at the swimming hole with the dog. And the ATV was like almost right in the middle of the dirt road. And, um... Yeah, it would not start at all. So, I'm like, well, I'm glad I come up and, you know, checked on you. And he was too, because he was, he was, you know, way past time that he wanted to come home, you know. And he figured that I wouldn't come and get him until 6 o'clock, you know, when the dogs get fed. <laughs> Yep, Teresa saved the day. And so, well, we have a, the winch on the four-wheeler. And um, so we hooked that to the, my, to the little car, which is a Toyota Rave, or RAV, whatever you want to call it. And uh, the road is extremely bumpy, right? And... I'm driving the car, and he's in the side-by-side, -side. and all of a sudden I hit that, I just was going just a little too fast, and anyway, it snapped the cable right in half, broke it, and of course I didn't bring a tow rope or chain or anything like that. I did think about it, <laughs> but I didn't do it. But luckily, my husband knows how to mend cable wires. 
because he was a commercial diver. And so he fixed it and he goes, I think maybe I should drive the car and you should be in the side by side. I'm like, okay, I can do that. And um, so now the cable is shorter, right? And he, in my opinion, he was going way too fast. Okay, so once the bumps were all gone and then he starts driving and he's just going way too fast. And I'm only like um, maybe three feet away from the back end of the car and the road is all dust. And yes, the side-by-side -side has a windshield, but it doesn't have doors. And so that dust was just, you know, plowing into the side-by-side -side and... And I could not see, I couldn't see well enough to see if his brakes come on or anything. <laughs> you know, I was really getting mad. And um, so I'm like, start waving my arm outside, you know. I'm like, slow down, slow down, right? Give him the slow down signal. Slow down, slow down. That's what this is. Slow down, slow down. <laughs> so he starts to stop. And so then I'm like, no, go but go slow. <laughs> Trying to give him all these signals, right? <laughs> so I think he, he must have got the point because it slowed down. And um, yeah, it was quite the day, you guys. <laughs> it was quite the day. <laughs> but we made it home. And on the parts of the road where it was going to go downhill, he just stopped at the top of the road and, and unhooked the vehicle and said, I want you to just go ahead and coast down. That way you won't, we won't run into each other. So we did that like three different times. Hi, Paula. And, um, yeah. I, I think it took us like an hour altogether to go five miles to get home. Well, you know, we just got that side by side last year and we bought it used and um, so we didn't have a book so he ordered the book and then he did some research so we're pretty sure it's the um, fuel pump and so he's got one of those ordered and um, so hopefully that fixes the problem Who's up here sweating, you guys? It's, it's so hot up here. I might have to find a new place to do my videos on Sunday. Hi, Vicki. How are you doing? Hi, Dela. How are you? So that was my Sunday story. A yummy pizza for dinner last night. That was good. No hamburgers. <laughs> Hi, Lori. How are you doing? Has everybody gotten their um, sew sampler box? Who gets one? Oh, yay, Amy found her sewing machine. <laughs> awesome. It really is a lot easier to do this binding with these machine gloves on. Or if you don't want to buy these gloves, um, you could even um, those garden gloves that have the grippy stuff on them. 
especially in the next process where you flip the binding over and do it on the front, then the gloves really help. Gladys canceled the sew sampler box. Ooh, enchiladas or tacos tonight. That sounds good. I do like tacos. And they're so quick and easy, you know. When you really don't feel like cooking, but you like tacos. Oh, yeah, KFC. Oh, I don't know even know where the closest KFC is. I haven't had that in a long time. But I used to work right next door to a KFC. And so that was good. I worked at a hamburger place when I was a teenager. Ooh, brisket. On the smoker. Yummy. Sorry, tun tuned in late. What are you using for backing? What do you mean? Are you talking to me, uh, Sherry? Or Shirley? Sorry. If you're talking to me, uh, the backing on this quilt was what they picked. <laughs> and the binding, too. Hi, Gwenny. Yep, it's one of the secret ingredients in their spices. Didn't you know? No. Having leftover chicken a la king on toast. That sounds good, too. A chicken sandwich. Hi, Francis. Okay. Glad you could sneak in for a little bit. Base is tomatoes, cucumbers, green peppers, can of corn drain, whipped salad mayo mix. Hmm, I think I missed something there. <laughs> Remember those ribs I did last week? I took the leftovers out of the freezer. <laughs> That's what we're having. So I'll just warm those up. Oh yeah, taco pizza is pretty good. <laughs> Melissa, I think you just love green beans. <laughs> I love green beans too. That's like my favorite canned vegetable. Ooh, BLTs. Now that sounds good too. I had those a few nights ago. Anne says she always sews binding on with the walking foot. If I had a walking foot, I probably would do that. But this works okay. Like I said, uh, these gloves really help with arthritis hands. I'm not nearly as quick as Tiffany, though. <laughs> I don't know how she does it so quick, but... Not me. you can't 
turn make the phone move with these gloves on. Food is a great subject. Because <laughs> everybody likes food, right? I don't think you're going to get in trouble talking food. Oh, green bean casserole. Don't get Beth started talking about that. Oh, I wanted to say too, Melissa, I saw... Uh, I think it was over on Bass channel. Um, you guys were talking about what you're allergic to. I'm allergic to surgical tape too. I break out in red hives, blistery with that stuff. So, yeah. I'm not allergic to um, band-aids, but... That hospital tape that they use, I'm allergic to that stuff. Oh, that's true, Mary says it's not Thanksgiving or Christmas without a green bean casserole. I actually like to do my green beans, um, like saute some onions, and then um, make bacon bits. So I throw the onions and some garlic and bacon bits in with the green beans. And if I happen to have some bacon grease, <laughs> I'll throw a little bit of that in there too and let it cook. And let it simmer. They are so good that way, in my opinion. I like them like that better than the casserole. Ooh, lazy cabbage rolls. Yes, bacon grease is awesome, Melissa. I have to agree with you there. <laughs> so I always save mine. I put it in, in the refrigerator so it doesn't go rancid. And when I'm cooking, um, my elk steak or deer steak, I definitely use the baking grease for that. And Colleen said she likes her green beans like that too. Yes, I like uh, fried green beans also. I like green beans raw, <laughs> fried, baked, simmered. They really are my favorite vegetable. When I was a little kid, my mom always had a garden and I would go sit out there under the by the green bean plants and sit there and eat the green beans. <laughs> She'd get mad at me cuz I could eat the whole plant, all the beans off the plant. She really had to watch me. My mom never had a hard time getting me to eat vegetables that I am aware of because I've always been a vegetable person. Now that I'm older and I'm having all these stomach problems, I do have to eat them cooked. I can't really eat anything raw because um, it really tears up my stomach. Same with fruit, I, which is a bummer because I used to love to just eat apples, but... I can't do that. They have to be cooked now. It's like I'm back to being a baby. Right? <laughs> right? You have to cook and mush up the baby's food. That's what I'd have to do. Okay. <laughs> Diapers are next. Uh, no faith. 
Okay, I got to another corner. I wish I had a good setup over there on the long arm because I'd really like to take you guys over there and show you what I'm what I'm doing. But my camera sucks. Oh really, Heather? Heather said apples are the one of the fruits that she can still eat raw. Um, I can eat like about a half an apple, and that doesn't hurt my stomach too bad. A small one, as long as it's not too sour. Lisa said, there is nothing that isn't better with baking grease. Baking grease and real butter. <laughs> I don't use that any fake butter. Nope, nope, nope. That stuff is not good for you. So, real butter. really don't like to eat anything that's processed but it's so hard to find foods in the grocery store that aren't processed unless it's vegetables hi crystal how are you today hi Tracy you feel so free good Oh, I do like base, uh, gravy and biscuits. Biscuits and gravy. Yummy. Sausage gravy. I'm glad you're doing well. Yeah. Margarine was actually developed by uh, oil company, I believe. <laughs> and it didn't work out for whatever reason. And somebody got the bright idea that you could eat it. So they colored it yellow and called it butter. Or margarine. I saw that documentary one time, a long time ago. So it's not really clear in my brain. But ever since then, I quit eating margarine. <laughs> And I decided I should just, you know, go with butter. Because you can even make butter, you know. If you have some cream from the cow, make your own butter. It's pretty good. Yes, polymer oil. Thank you. So... It's amazing the stuff they try to get have us eat and I'm really surprised that the FDA and all that allows it. I don't get it. But that's a whole different subject. <laughs> Shelly says no margarine or Crisco in my house. Exactly. I mean, you can use real butter to make biscuits or bread or whatever. You don't need Crisco. Okay, Gwenny, I read that. Go ahead. I'm waiting for it. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> why do you bury your groceries in the dirt? <laughs> Apparently he was from the city. Born and parents had no garden. True story. That's funny. <laughs> well, you know, that's really sad because a lot of people don't realize where all that food comes from when you grow up in the city like that. I feel so blessed to have been raised in the country, either on a cattle or a horse ranch or, you know, and my mom always had great big gardens. And we canned a lot. She even canned meat, you know, chicken, deer and elk meat, whatever. She canned it. And then um, we lived in Boise, Idaho at times when I was growing up. And my aunt, she lived out in uh, Cuna. And I used to go out, there was a lot of corn fields out there and we'd go pick corn. And then we would freeze the corn that was a lot of work, but I appreciate the experience, I'll just say that. <laughs> Hi Ellen, how are you doing? I need to make some more jelly. We are just about out of huckleberry jelly. I think there's two small jars left, and I think I have seven gallons in the freezer yet. So, um, I think I can sacrifice <laughs> like two of the bags for jelly. And, and then when I go pick huckleberries in um, August, uh, I'll probably wait until, you know, later in the year and um, can up a couple of more gallons. But, you know, I use those fresh huckleberries in my morning drink, so I use about a, a little over a quarter of a cup in every drink. And I figure I'm the one that goes and picks them, you know, <laughs> so my husband is lucky is he, if he gets any. But this morning I had, um, uh, no, I don't make freezer jam because my freezer is packed with other stuff. So, um, have you seen that machine that they have now? It kind of looks like a, well, it's for making jam and it has a rotisserie thing in the middle of it spoon that keeps turning and the pot gets hot and so you put I can do like two batches I can do like eight cups of fruit in that and what I like about it is it it keeps turning and turning I usually cook it longer than what the directions call for and then you add your pectin and your sugar and all that stuff. But um, what I like about it is you don't have to stand there and, you know, keep stirring your, your jelly. It does it for you. And that thing is awesome. The other thing I really like that I have is a steamer. So, you know, I could go to, go pick a bunch of apples, let's say, in the fall and just cut them in half and I throw them in that steamer and then the apples just, you know, pretty good. Pretty soon I have um, apple juice. <laughs> I really like that steamer. It's awesome. And I also have a steam canner. So I'll use that for anything that doesn't need to be pressure cooked takes a lot less water you do have to cook it a little bit longer on the steamer 
but I've never had any problems with it. Um, so it doesn't heat up the house as bad as a water bath. Heather used to make applesauce when her kids were young. Yeah, I'll make applesauce now and then too. I made a bunch of that. And I got a bunch of pears the other day. Oh, I'm got to do something with those pears. But I'm thinking about just slicing those up and um, canning those mm -hmm. And just like just sliced pears. I love pears. Hi, Beverly. Oh, yeah, the Instapot. That thing works good. My sister has one of those. She loves it. Right, Laura. Hi, Laura. She said she used to can food. My mom had six kids. We learned how to process food or we went hungry. Exactly. <laughs> My mom had five. And we weren't rich, so... <laughs> We had to can everything. The darn dog was lucky he didn't get canned too. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. I can freeze the pears and make pear crisp or whatever. Delicious. Do you freeze them with the skins on, or do you, like, put them in freezer bags? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, I know. The canning jar prices are terrible, and the lids. They don't make it easy on you. Everything has just gone up so much. Yeah, if you can find the lids, exactly. But, like on that jelly, I could use, like, paraffin. Seal them up that way. Or, I could just make freezer jelly. But then what if the power goes out? You know? Alright, I'm at another corner, you guys. This is my third corner, I think. Faith says ball canning jars are made in her hometown. In her town. Yeah, hometown. Awesome. I drink from a mason jar, too. <laughs> I like the wide mouth jars. Those are the best. Yeah, I would think you would blanch the pears first, but I don't know. I've never done it. I'll have to look in my ball book. Let's see. Oh, there's my drink. Oh. Shirley makes a Christmas pudding with potatoes, carrots, and canned fruit. Hmm. Oh, fermenting is awesome too. It came before canning, yes. Yep, I'd have to get a book on that though. 
Okay, so Mary said no, she didn't blanch them because she was in a hurry, but they still came out fine. Bye, Ellen. Thanks for stopping in. Oh, awesome, Vicki. She said, my son bought me 20 tomato plants and 18 pepper plants. Ooh, that sounds good, Faith. She said, I made a chocolate to die for poke cake last week. Lots of work, but heavenly. I don't think I've ever had a chocolate poke cake. <laughs> Beth leaving. Bye, Beth. See you later. See you tonight. Thanks for stopping in. Okay, so... You guys want to see what's in the sew sampler box? I, it's been an hour. Time for me to stand up. Take a break from this uh, quilt. Oh, boy. I need a break <laughs> from that. And I need to stand up for a minute. Open, open, open. Yeah? Okay, so if anybody out there that gets the sew sampler box that doesn't want to see what's in it, close your eyes now. Okay? I'll give you just a minute. Do, 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 do. I gotta walk around a little bit. Get myself a piece of chocolate. Got to keep up my strength. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> oh, cool, Patty. And some uh, mom and pop pattern. I know, uh, my husband wanted to do a garden this year. I don't know what happened to that. I guess he's waiting for me. <laughs> Hi, Trish. Ooh, that sounds good. She said, the last thing I canned a couple of years ago was my famous orange port wine cranberry sauce. I made... It made great Christmas presents. Ooh, that sounds good. Kim said, A girlfriend used to make a chocolate poke cake called Better Than, you know. <laughs> it was delicious. Devil's Food Cake, Eagle Brand Milk, Whipped Cream, Chocolate Shavings. Yummy. You know, I'm going to have to look that recipe up. Faith, you should you should put that recipe in the Facebook group. <laughs> mm, sounds good. Okra is a never-ending garden veggie. Uh, I don't now that is the one vegetable I'm not crazy about. Hi, Scrunchy. <laughs> See above. Okay. Beverly said you're going to like it. She loved hers this month. Okay, Kathy. Mm. I have a hard time saying scrunchions. So I'm going to just say scrunchy. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. Okra is a delicious weed. <laughs> Every plant is a weed. 
unless it's one that you like to eat. Okay, Robbie, thanks for stopping in. So glad you could be here. Faith hates okra. <laughs> Hi, BP, how's it going? <laughs> you, I can call you scrunchy. Awesome. <laughs> you like it? I saw in a different chat that um, Robbie is a good friend of Kim's, so so glad she could be here today. Okay. All right, I'm going to open it. Let's open it. Drum roll. Dehydrated tomatoes and pecan pulp for flour. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I'm not a fan of okra either. <laughs> so that's what I don't like about okra is that snotty stuff on there. Okay, here we go. There's the inside. Meant to be. This is the June 2022 Sew so Sampler box. And we have some stuff on the back that we can get as subscribers. We have a free project bag with $40 purchase. Um, peony mad for plaid huh so that's what the you get three different choices okay so I can't show you that because that code is just for so sampler people Ooh, looky here. Here we go. Hey, this, wow, there's a lot in here. Cool, cool, cool. Wow, got some fabric. Okay, let's see. Mongolia flower uh, pot. Junior Jelly Roll. So Junior Jelly Roll. It's valued at $21.98 and it's by Lala Boutique. Ooh, she's my favorite. Cool. Let me slide this down a little bit. I'll get up a little bit closer. This reminds me of a different one of her designs. Either last year or the year before. I think I still have it over there on the shelf. So I think it's like a half a jelly roll, right? So there's probably 20 strips in here. Hold on, let me see. Yeah. So. I'm not sure what year this, either last year or the year before, she came out with Folktale, it was called. And the colors are very similar. So really, you know, I could use this one with this one, and they would probably blend in pretty good. Right? So that's kind of cool. Because obviously I haven't used that one yet. <laughs> it was last year. Yeah, I think we can mix them. So, cool. Okay, got that. 
we got a spool of thread. This is by Mettler. 100% cotton silk thread. Yeah, I think they'd be awesome together. I like Mettler. Silk finish. Great. Love having a spool of thread. Uh, 500 yards. And it's 698. 698. All right. Oh, cool. Uh, we got a lighted seam ripper. A girl cannot have too many seam rippers. <laughs> I have a lighted seam ripper, and it, it's great over there on the long arm especially. So this is awesome. And this is by the Gypsy Quilter. And it's valued at $8.98. It says that the battery is included. So, and it's a pretty baby light blue. So, that's awesome. Rip in the dark, yep. <laughs> okay, uh, the next thing Oh, we have a little bag. Isn't that cute? But it's got something in it. It is Idle Moments Bamboo Coasters. Cool. Oh, how nice. You get two of them. With uh, quilt patterns on them. That's that one. That's that one. Those are nice. Let's take them apart. Oh, and they got the little feet on there. Cool. I'm going to use these downstairs. Hi, Joyce. How are you doing? These are nice. I like them, guys. These value at $6.74. So, great thing to put your beverage on. Oh, hi, Susan. I didn't see you come in. So those are really nice. And you get a nice little bag, too, that you can use for other things, right? All right, let's look at the pattern. Mango Mangolia quilt pattern. And for this project is um, placemats. You would need this one jelly roll or a half a jelly roll and one yard of background and three quarters yard of binding and that will get you four of the placemats or you could do a table runner and same thing this roll plus one yard of background and one and a half yards for the binding or if you wanted to do the quilt, which I do, I like it, um, you would need two of these. So I could use this one and then my other one um, by her, right? And make the whole quilt. And I would need two and a quarter yards of background and five eighths for the binding. So let me show you what this looks like. It, The quilt would be... 54 and a half by 62 and a half. So here's the, you do a uh, table or placemats, a uh, table runner, or the quilt. So three options. So that's a pretty good price 
ten dollars is usually what these are and here's a bigger picture of the quilt kind of has that southwestern feel to it and it um, kind of reminds me of like the courthouse step block Here's a bigger picture of the table runner. So I think this would be a nice one to do. Awesome. But a lot of two and a half inch squares. <laughs> yeah, Native American even. Yeah. Especially with these dark rich colors. Okay, and so we're on block three of the sew along the bliss quilt along by fig tree this it's that's what it is this year and it looks like this that's a cool looking block i like that block i haven't started this but i'm thinking about doing it i don't know got so many projects out there <laughs> but i'm saving them so, uh, I like this box. I think it was a good value box. All the things I will definitely use. You know, I'll. she is one of my favorite designers. Um, not that I know them all by who they the designs are, but like the Christmas morning fabric. You guys know how much I love that Christmas morning fabric. <laughs> so, um The other thing, I think, if you pulled out the fabric that has the flowers on it, the rest of them would really look cool in a, for a man's quilt, you know. So, there's that. And I think that would be a nice uh, pattern for a, a man, too. I would use something different than white for the background. Like a light brown or something like that. I would look really good. Um, so yeah, I like the fabric. I like the pattern. I really like the coasters. I think that's awesome. Uh, seam ripper. That's great and awesome to get thread. So really good box this month. Fat Quarter Shop, you did good. <laughs> now, if you're listening, Fat Quarter Shop... I really could use some sewing machine needles <laughs> for the next box. I would really appreciate it. Thank you very much ahead of time. So what do you guys think? Oh, men like flowers too? I'm sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't as assume that men don't want flowers on their quilts. Sorry about that moldy lasagna. I didn't see you in here. <laughs> and if Luane is in here, sorry. Or Jim. <laughs> Jim might be watching on the TV. That's what he does a lot. If he is, hello, Jim. So, I like the box. Yay. Oh, yeah, I think so, Joyce. You don't understand the light on the seam ripper? how to use it or why they would put it there well um, that other one I have let me see if I can find it yeah here's the other one and there's the light I really like it on the long arm using it over there because I don't have a lot of light bright light over there this works awesome and um, you know I haven't used it on as a normal seam ripping just when I need to pick threads out um, on the long arm over there <laughs> yeah, Dream Ripper, Seam Ripper. Oh, 
Oh, that's a, that is true, Shelly. She said the light is essential when picking black thread out of black fabric. Oh, boy. Aren't you right? Exactly. My vision isn't all that great either. Um, so this really helps when I'm in the machine quilting. Those um, threads are really tight. And um, it, it just really helps. Oh, oh no, Colleen. She said that would b have been handy. That's what she was doing this morning. Ugh. So, anyway, I think I'm going to put that other jelly roll in here. I'll take all this other stuff out. Then I'll just leave this project in here in the box. And put it in my... <laughs> where all my other projects are. Hiding. And I'll do two of them. That'll be good. Okay. And then I usually write on the side, right here somewhere, what's in the box. Uh, what should I write on there? Oh, I could put Lala Batik. Lala Batik. I'll put the pattern. Mongolia. Magnolia. No, yeah. And it's. Okay. See how I did that? Yeah. They work pretty good. I mean, it won't stay in here, this box, the whole time. Because when I start gathering the rest of the fabric, I'll probably put it in one of those clear plastic totes that I use. Works pretty good. But for at this stage, there. So, I can put that up. And then I'll put these things up. And let's open this seam ripper. And check it out. Okay, it's a hard, it's a hard plastic. And Light is not working, so let's see if there's... Okay, that has teeny little batteries in it. And it's got a little piece of paper in there. You have to take the paper out from the batteries. Okay. Ooh. So, it's pretty bright. Let's compare it to this one. Now this one. Okay. This one. Can you tell on the mat? This one has a much better light. Much, much better light. Can you see that? Yeah, practically a flashlight. Now, it's really super bright around the glass part here. But what's important is that the light is bright down at the tip, right? And I think this one is a lot better for that. Let's see. I mean, it's okay. But definitely this one is a lot brighter. So this one what is um I don't know. 
Becca gave it to me. I think it's a from Drezzel. Doesn't say. Um, but this one is from the Gypsy Quilter. I think it's okay, but I do, like I said, I think this one's better <laughs> for the light. Now, I will check out the ripping part because it probably has a pretty good point and stuff on it. Okay. There. And these can go downstairs. So this quilt inspired art prints. And oh wow, they have some pretty designs. Wood quilt, wall hangings, and functional art by artist Troy Murray. You can learn more about it at www.troymurray.com. Aren't those pretty? Oh, he also does quilt block enamel pens, hard cover journals, and art prints. That's pretty cool, huh? Oh, uh, me too. Did that just happen, Melissa? To me? Did my internet drop? Hmm. Okay, go cook. Oh, Melissa. Oh, I'm sorry, Melissa. Okay, that'll go downstairs, so I'll put that over there. And I might save this and check them out on the website. So I'll put that over there too. The thread can go over here. <laughs> Aren't I doing good? I'm putting stuff up. And this and this and this. I probably won't use that, so I know where it's going to go. Okay, thanks, Shelly. And then these things can go over there. And I'll put this seam ripper over here. Actually, you know, I might put this downstairs in my cross stitch stuff. Good idea. Okay. Okay. All right, that's good to know. Okay. So, I'll just put this stuff over here. Grab me a couple more candies. <laughs> okay. How many people we have? 84? Wow! Cool. Okay. We have 84 people. How many thumbs up do we have? Stash of candy is good. I know, right? I'm going to do a giveaway. So, we could either do a giveaway in the live chat, hi Melina, how are you doing, 
67 thumbs up. That's pretty good. Awesome. So I'm going to give away one of my floss wallets. And, yep, that's what I'm going to do. You see 70? Awesome. So let me go get one of them. Hi, Chloe. I use these floss wallets for cross stitch, but you might be able to think of something else to use them for. Here it is. So you, you can put your bobbin bobbins in there for your cross stitch threads, or you can just put the whole thread thing in there. Let me get one out that has the yeah, you joined just in time. Here's one that has the little floss bobbins in it. You can see that. So um, they hold like 24 of those and then here's a little flap for your extra strings and then the little heart for your needles and then you just fold it up and then you can tie it closed. So I really appreciate all of my subscribers and everybody that comes to visit with me on these live chats. Um, so I thought I would do a giveaway. Ooh, candy. Are you going to give us candy? No. <laughs> the candy's for me, Beverly. Oh, you could use it for candy snacks. Yeah. Okay. So here's the deal, you guys. You do have to be in the United States. I'm sorry. But you know, um... I'll have to come up with something else for my um, other viewers around the world. Maybe like a gift certificate or something like that. So let me figure out what I can do there. But <laughs> no candy for you. Hi, Della. And, um, you know, because the shipping is so darn expensive. And so this for this time, I'm going to have to... Just make it for U.S. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Yeah, the postage is crazy. It's not worth it in the end, exactly. But if I did like an Amazon... Uh, you guys get Amazon stuff there, Gwenny? Uh, like a gift certificate? <laughs> Sorry, Ann. She says, I never eat candy, but I want some now. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. I'm glad I could help. Okay, Judy. Why well, are you going to wait for the giveaway? Okay. Well, here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to write down a number. Don't start yet. How many people we have? We have 86 people. So a number between 1 and 86. And I'm going to write it down. Um... Okay, 
So the first one to get the number will win. So if you want to win one of my wallets, start put and I don't you can be a moderator, anybody who lives in the United States. The number order on my screen and my screen is on live chat. So go ahead and start entering numbers now. Go ahead. And ooh, there's some close ones right off the bat. So we have to go off of what my screen says. Nope, nobody's got it yet. Got some close ones though. Joyce. Joyce Baker with the number 52. Yay. Yay, Joyce. That's the first one I saw. So, you get Mr. Party. Party! 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 <laughs> okay, Joyce, send me an email um, with your address, okay? And I will get that mailed to you you love mr party <laughs> he's so funny i've had him for for a very long time <laughs> mr party thanks for playing that you guys congratulations joys So, Joyce is the big winner. Awesome. She got the, uh, my, one of my Foss Floss wallets. You are very welcome. Hi, Eric. How are you doing? So, Joyce, um, my email is under this video is my ad my email address so you can just send me an email <laughs> yeah so that is awesome so i will did gwenny answer the my question about um gift certificates like from amazon you get Amazon deliveries in Canada. Oops. Now, too many numbers in there. Oh yeah, June, you you need to refresh. Um, I, no, I haven't so, sold the floss wallets. Do you want to buy one? <laughs> Send me an email and we'll figure something out. Hi, Jackie. Oh, you didn't get the question you got called away? Um, I asked if if uh oh there she tracy got it yes we get amazon delivery in canada okay so th i might have to do it that way like a gift certificate for people outside of the united states okay awesome well you guys 
does anybody have any questions? I'm probably going to go ahead and go. My husband wanted to go fishing this afternoon. It was not too hot. I think we're going to go to the swimming hole, but we're going to take the little car. Because <laughs> the side-by-side's -side not running. And Willa wants to go fishing, huh? Willa wants to go swimming. Yeah, Willa wants to go swimming. Where is Santa? I don't know. Don't yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not planning on getting stranded, but it's not five miles. I think I can walk five miles. Maybe. Come here, Willa. Come on up here. Everybody wants to see ya. Come on. Come here. <laughs> Come up higher. <laughs> you silly girl. Come on, up higher. Come here. Come here. She doesn't want to jump on me. Nobody can see you over there. Come here. Come here, baby. There. Can you guys see her now? Yeah, kind of. She doesn't really jump on people. She's not a jumper. I think she's afraid she's going to get in trouble. <laughs> but she's not. It's okay if I ask you. <laughs> um, I got her when she was about two. She was already two. And um, thanks, Faith. And very, yes, <laughs> yes, it's always interesting. You never know. And um, she wasn't, uh, she was kind of abused little girl so you know I think that's one of the things she might have gotten beaten for is uh, jumping on somebody so anyway but she's not abused anymore because I love that dog you guys know that all right you guys thank you so much for hanging out with me today I had a lot of fun and um, come back next Sunday We'll try and do a project together. <laughs> yeah, I heard you say that, Eric, about going into the walk-in freezers. That would be nice. So later on is Tiffany's Quilting Life. I don't know if I'll be there or not because of the fishing thing. And then I believe Beth from Goody Goods is going to go on um after tiffany um i think eric are you and t live tonight also did i hear that somewhere i'll wait until i get a reply about that from either eric or somebody who knows <laughs> like colleen <laughs> oh you're on zoom tonight okay oh i might pop in for that Oh, that's right. I, um, you can either go to Eric's Facebook or T's Facebook and um, join the Zoom. Yeah, time does go really fast, doesn't it? But I'm looking forward to going to the swimming hole. That is one of Willa's favorite things to do is jump in the water and get the ball. So she'll scare all the fish. <laughs> But I guess somebody caught a 16-inch fish out of there the other day, so the hubby really wants to go try it out. <clears throat> well, I'll see you later, Lynn. Bye, Brenda. Bye, Melissa. Bye, Colleen. Bye, Beth. Bye, Shelly. Okay, it's okay, Colleen. Don't worry about it right now. Um, you can go to um, Treasure Heart Creations for Eric. And um, I'm sure he has his link to the his Facebook. Teresa, how do you see Donna's replay on gift certificates from Amazon? No, I didn't, but... Um, is that something I should go look at, Cindy? Is there something about that? 
Now I gotta wait for Donna's answer. Hi, Teresa. Sorry, I'm gonna um, leave a little bit early, but not too much early, about 15 minutes. Okay, sounds good, Eric. I'm waiting for Cindy's reply, if she's still there, about gift certificates from Amazon. I know there's a delay, so I'll just wait. See how patient I am? <laughs> oh, you need to buy it in Canada. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll have to figure that out then. Thank you, Cindy, for letting me know that. Well, yes, and thank you to all the moderators. I really appreciate you guys. That's okay, Crystal. Okay. Oh, so I would... Thank you, Donna. So I would need to know who the winner is, what country they're from, and then purchase the gift certificate. So. That's okay, Vicki. Life happens. All right, you guys. Go have... Um, awesome rest of your Sunday, okay? And I will see you all later. Love you guys. Bye for now.